We're talking with Kerry James and Liz Dawes Derising, who have an interesting workshop on slow meets social media, digital storytelling, listening, and learning. How does slow meet social media? That's a, a, a pretty paradoxical title. Um, give us an idea of, of the direction you're going to take in your workshop. Well, we're glad that you think it's paradoxical because that's what we were going for. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that social media can be used in ways that, you know, really slow the pace down and allow people, uh, and particularly young people, which is the focus of our work, to really be much more thoughtful, mindful, deliberate about their interactions with others. So um, as participants in our workshop will learn, uh, we've created a program that is really focused on the principle of slowing down and really observing the world carefully, listening attentively to others, and exchanging stories and perspectives with individuals you otherwise wouldn't encounter. Liz, can you add anything about why slow meets social media is how we mm. capture the ideas behind our work? No, well, I think another way that we could have put it would be low-tech meets high-tech, um, because we've really interwoven some activities that are very natural in a way, like taking a walk in your neighborhood, talking to somebody face-to-face, -face, and we've combined that with the affordances of social media. Um, and now might be a good time to mention the third person who will be presenting <laughs> um, our workshop. His name is Paul Salapek. Um, he's a journalist who's embarked on hmm, a nine to 10 year walk around the world. And he's doing a very massive project in what he calls slow journalism. And so we collaborate with him because he's trying to embody in his writing and his work and his observations of the world some of the qualities that we've tried to incorporate into our curriculum for young people. Um, I'll, just, I'll just add as an aside, the reason he couldn't be on this video is that he's currently camping on the steps of Kazakhstan on a water research mission to plan for the next leg of his trip. Have you done exercises, uh, activities with students around around this theme? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the curriculum that we have developed as part of our program, which is called Out of Eden Learn, um, is built around some of the things mm -hmm. that Liz mentioned. You know, the sort of low tech activities. Uh, we ask young people to go take a slow walk in their neighborhood and try to see the familiar with unfamiliar eyes, to interview a neighbor about changes in their community over time, to draw some maps, to think about how their own lives fit into a larger global picture by noticing global forces in the world around them. And then, you know, they take photographs or they write stories and have write-ups from these activities which they post on our social media platform and those so that's that's a really good example of how the slow mindful activities we're asking them to do um, as part of the curriculum end up um, interfacing with the social media piece and so they post their work on a platform and then share it with young people who are also going through our curriculum but living in different parts of the world and they comment on one another's work. Yeah, at this point, uh, we've been doing this for over three years now. So we've got a really pretty well-honed model um, that we've kind of built as we've gone along in, in a collaborative process with our participating teachers and students. Um, so that's kind of been an exciting piece of our work, really, in that we didn't have a blueprint and then tried it out. We've really established this model and tinkered with it as, as, as time has gone by. And, and Paul's walk has unfolded as well. You know, this might, might sound a little tangential, but um, what do you do about laptops and, and telephones in the classroom? They're used by your students. So, so to clarify, we ourselves are not classroom teachers. Okay. So um, we're based at Project Zero at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Uh -huh. And we have a very diffuse model. So we have... We've had, so to date, um, classrooms in 52 different countries um, take part. Some are 
homeschool, after school, some will be in a history lesson, a geography, a kindergarten classroom. And so it's very much in the hands of the teachers how they handle that. Some of our participating classrooms are, you know, one laptop per child or iPad per child. Others, they're actually essentially doing most of the work offline and then regrouping in a computer lab or, or space once a week to catch up upload their work so that we definitely don't um, have a recommended model and you know classroom policies regarding um, digital tools I, I, I asked that because uh, I, I taught college students uh, for 10 years and when, oh, okay. when, when I, I raised that issue um, and asked them to talk about it in the in the forums the offline part that took place between meetings I, I found consistently that a majority of students wanted me as the, the teacher, the authority figure, to tell them uh, mm -hmm. what to do. And mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. always raised an interesting conversation about you know, how driven they are to, to be uh, in touch with social media mm -hmm. all the time and how the, they sort of wish somebody would would give them the authority to stop doing that at the pace they're doing it. That's actually, that's actually a terrific point that you make because what we've heard over and over again from students is that you know their lifestyles are very busy, they're, they feel over scheduled, there's a deluge of information and time to be on social media. So the fact that our, we call them learning journeys, the fact that um, our curriculum forces them to take a slow walk in their neighborhood, forces them to stop and look quietly and thoughtfully at something. It's like a breath of fresh air for them in many ways and, and it can often be a novel experience. Now, and many report that they will do more of it, whether or not they can or, or will I, um, isn't always clear, but I think we kind of almost have to build in these experiences for people because contemporary lifestyle is such that it's very hard to do it without somebody facilitating that for you. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I absolutely agree. I think the other thing, and we've been talking a lot about the slow component of our project and our work, but the other piece is um, trying to put young people in touch with other young people who live in different parts of the world or who live in very different circumstances from their own. And that's another key principle of our program and why we constructed a social media platform for, them, for young people to experience this curriculum on. We intentionally place them into smaller groups within our online community that are geographically diverse as well as socioeconomically diverse, but si similar age bands. So uh, middle school students would be with other middle, middle school students and teens would, you know, be with other teens or, mm -hmm. you know, 16 to 17 year olds. Um, um, but we think that, uh, you know, that experience of exchanging stories and perspectives with young people living on the other side of the globe, it doesn't happen all that often, despite the promise that the Internet, you know, placed before us, the promise of cosmopolitanism that, you know, Ethan Zuckerman writes about. Mm. No, absolutely. The, the curriculum seems to me, as a former practitioner, as something extremely useful that a lot of people are going to be interested in. Because I think, as you know, the media have come along so quickly that the ways in which people teach the, the pedagogy has, has not really been able to deal with it in an organized manner. There are people here and people there who've experimented. So I think a lot of uh, educators are going to be looking forward to being exposed to your curriculum and being able to use your methods. So um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. We look forward to seeing you in October.